God supposed to do? The Apostle Paul gives us the answer. In every letter he wrote to the churches, he starts with an opening statement. It's kind of his signature mark, mark that I wrote this letter. Now it's a greeting, but it's also a prophetic blessing. And this is the antidote to worry, fear, and anxiety that was in that day and is even more so in this day. And here it is, Romans 1, 7, and it's in every book that Paul wrote. To all who are in Rome, beloved of God, called to be saints, grace to you and peace from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Let's examine this a little deeper. Find some truths that will become bedrock that we can anchor to in the storms that are coming. First, let's look at grace. The common definition of grace is it's God's unmerited favor on our lives that we don't deserve, but is given to us because of what Jesus did for us at Calvary. This is all true, absolutely true. But grace is much more than just favor. Grace is God's supply of anything and everything you will ever need to live for him, fulfill his plan for you, minister for him, make it in, and make it into heaven. It is available to you abundantly and overwhelmingly by faith. Let's look at some scriptures about grace. Paul irrevocably, irrevocably linked grace and faith together in Ephesians 2.8. He says, for by, by grace you have been saved through faith, and that not of yourselves, it is the gift of God. By grace, yes, you've been saved through faith. 2 Corinthians 9, 8 says, And God is able to make all grace abound toward you, that you, always having all sufficiency in all things, may have an abundance of every good work. Yeah. Philippians 4, 9, 4, 19. And my God shall supply all your need according to his riches in glory by Christ Jesus. And this is, this is the one we need to really grab a hold of right here. Hebrews 4.16 Let us therefore come boldly to the throne of grace, that we may obtain mercy and find grace to help in time of need. Yes. Yes. That's where we get it. Now there's lots more scriptures you can look up and study later. I suggest you do so and you get this grace deep in your heart. Now, let's look at peace. There are two kinds of peace that you need. The first kind of peace is peace with God. Now, historically, peace comes at the end of a war when one side surrenders to the other. When we, when we surrender the lordship of our lives to God, to the Lord, then we have peace with God. We are no longer his enemy. We're no longer alienated. This needs to be an everyday decision and prayer. The first thing this more every morning when you open your eyes. Lord, I surrender. I give you my life. Have your way today. Romans 5, 1 and 2 says, Therefore, having been justified by faith, we have peace with God through our Lord Jesus Christ, through whom also we have access by faith into this grace in which we stand and rejoice in hope of the glory of God. Colossians 1 19 and 20. For God was pleased 
to have all his fullness dwell in him, and through him to reconcile to himself all things, whether things on earth or things in heaven, by making peace through the blood of his cross. That's how we have peace with God. Now the second kind of peace that we need is the peace of God. This peace comes from the Lord in the midst of your situations, your circumstances, and your storms. And it's not dependent upon everything being beautiful, lovely, and calm. You don't have to have the warm fuzzies to have peace. You can be in the middle of a battle and still have peace. In John 14, 1, Jesus says, Don't let your hearts be troubled. Trust in God. Trust also in me. In John 14, 27, Jesus says, Peace I leave with you. My peace I give you. Not as the world gives do I give to you. Let not your heart be troubled, neither let it be afraid. That's right. Now an interesting little note, 365 times in the Bible, God says, fear not. That's one for each day of the year, by the way. <laughs> so he's got you covered all year long. In Philippians 4, 4 through 9, Paul says, Rejoice in the Lord always. I will say it again, rejoice. Let your gentleness be apparent to all. The Lord is near. Be anxious for nothing. Be anxious for nothing. Be anxious for nothing. But in everything, by prayer and petition, with thanksgiving, Present your requests to God. And the peace of God, which surpasses all understanding, will guard your hearts and your minds in Christ Jesus. Finally, brothers, whatever is pure, whatever is lovely, whatever is admirable, if anything is excellent or praiseworthy, think on these things. Whatever you have learned or received or heard from me or seen in me, put it into practice, and the God of peace will be with you. This kind of peace only comes when you surrender all your situations and circumstances to him. Worry only produces ulcers. Sorry, but that's the way it is. Faith produces results. So you can ask the Lord to lead you and guide you and sustain you through everything you're going through. And, may I say, we're all going through a lot. Now an interesting insight popped up as I was preparing this message. And that is how faith is so strongly connected with grace and peace. So let's look at faith for just a moment. Faith, this is the definition of faith. Faith is believing that God is who he says he is. That he has the power to do what he promises he can do. And number three, he will do it for me if I ask him. Scripture tells us in Romans 12, 3, for I, this is Paul, for I say through the grace given to me, to everyone who is among you, not to think of himself more highly than he ought to think, but to think soberly, as God has dealt to each one a measure of faith. So God has given you faith faith. You got faith in order to be saved. So, I think Paul wrote that just for Firestorm Ministries. <laughs> and he also wrote the next verse. 2 Thessalonians 1.3 We're bound to thank God always for you, brethren, as it is fitting, because your faith 
grows exceedingly. And the love of every one of you all abounds towards each other. That's the one he wrote for us. Good, good word. Now, faith has been described using many analogies. Here are just a few. Faith is like a muscle. The more you use it, the stronger it gets. Faith is the key that unlocks God's storehouse of grace and opens the doors. Faith is the pipeline through which grace flows. Faith moves the hand of God. They're all true. In Hebrews 4, verses 14 through 16, seeing then that we have a great high priest who has passed through the heavens, Jesus, the Son of God, let us hold fast our confession. For we do not have a high priest who cannot sympathize with our weaknesses, but was in all points tempted as we are, yet without sin. Let us therefore come boldly to the throne of grace, that we may obtain mercy and find grace to help in time of need. Everything you need in life can be found at the throne of God's grace. If you come by faith, he will supply your need. Romans 10, 17. So then faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God. Don't ever let anyone tell you you don't need to read the Bible anymore or hear Bible preaching or Bible teaching because it's the word of God that's the raw material that faith is built out of. Hebrews 11, 6. But without faith, it is impossible to please him. For he who comes to God must believe that he is, and that he is a rewarder of those who diligently seek him. Notice the word diligently. That means constantly, repeatedly. We are facing tumultuous times right now and dark days up ahead before this is all over. It is extremely important for you to be anchored in faith, grace, and the peace of God. Without these three things, you'll be ripe for the devil's picking. With these things, you'll make it all the way to the end. Now we all need more grace and peace in our lives. And that's the end of the sermon part. So, 